Man, I have so much to cover in this episode of State of the Multiverse. And there's going to be some good news and some bad news. So we're going to start with the bad and we're going to end with the good. The first piece of news is the discontinuation of the Leatherman Bolster. It doesn't appear to be anywhere on Costco's website. Uh, people have said it's completely out of stock at all their local Costco's. It didn't even have time to really take hold. And I've seen pictures for it as little as $18. Um, up until like a month ago, a month ago. So it appears to be gone. They didn't say anything, but here we are. So I'm going to have to redo my list of top multi-tools under $50, but you guys should know. The other thing, and it's probably a bigger piece of news, is that Victorinox has decided to discontinue 39 of their models. 39. Now, to be fair, Victorinox makes a lot of models, and they make a lot of knives. In fact, last year they made 31 million pocket knives, 31 million. So it seems logical from a business perspective to cut the ones that are not selling very well when you make that many. That's a good choice, and it's gonna end up helping them stay well into the future. But there are two models that really bug me that they discontinued. I really wish they hadn't. The first one is the Small Tinker, which is so iconic. 84 millimeters with a great tool set. I know a lot of people don't carry it anymore, but God, it was so iconic, and I, I'm really sorry that they got rid of it. The other one is even worse, um, and that is the Victorinox 58mm Manager. This is one of my favorite, actually, no, it is my favorite Victorinox ever made, and uh, I'm sad to see it go. I really, really am. Now, they will be having the Mini Champ still with the pen slot. So it's not the end of the world, but there was just something about the combination that it had. It was just right. It didn't have anything excess. It was just very, very useful. So there. Now I got this information from a really great video from Victorinox Spain, and he has a video on this. I will link it down in the description and the pinned comment. And you can watch it, even though it is in Spanish, by enabling subtitles and also selecting in the settings your particular language, in this case, English for me. And uh, I was able to understand it perfectly, and you can look at the various different sections and different sizes, and he walks through all 39 models. So thank you so much for that. you got to go check him out. Now, that's the bad. But maybe Victorinox, this is the right decision for them. The good. Let's talk about the good. Uh, new multi-tool coming from SOG. And normally that's not a big deal. I haven't been all that impressed with them. However, this one has a different kind of plier head that I've never seen before with a very good set of wire cutters. So in a small package like that, it could be a nice addition and it has the compound leverage system. So being able to cut a wire effectively and be so small, there, I, could, I could see this being a decent tool. So we'll be checking that out for sure in the future. So the really big news here is that the Leatherman Arc is real. That is not what I expected. I really didn't. And if I was a betting man, I would have lost a lot of money on this. Magna cut blade steel, DLC coating, thumb studs. It's not their normal MO, but I guess they're reinventing the wheel a little bit for themselves and defining a new level of premium. And trust me, this is premium. So the, the tool set here, and we're gonna go showcase this beautiful rendering from Zap Wizard. Great work, by the way you're gonna see that this is a really nice looking tool. And they didn't even have to put a DLC coating on a MagnaCut blade. It's super corrosion resistant, but it does look really nice. Now a little aside here, Zap Wizard is the individual who has made a whole group of add-ons and replacement implements for the free series tools, as well as 3D printed sheaths that hold bits and many, many other things. You gotta go check out his website at zapwizard.com. I'll put a link down in the pinned comment in the description. Definitely check him out. So I'm very impressed, to say the least, that this is even something they're considering doing and that they can make it in any quantity whatsoever. The image, the high-res image that generated a lot of this information is in Korean. And in one of the asterisks, they talk about this tool being available for between two and three years. But most importantly, it says that it will not be a limited release, meaning this will definitely not be a Leatherman Garage. Thank you. Thank you. Because that would have sucked. That would have sucked for them to give us a tool set that's just about perfect and then made it only 500 units. So, speaking of the tool set here, 
you have the diamond file, which we've been asking for since the free P4 was released. You have the bit driver, which we've all been asking for since the P4 was released. We even have the micro driver, which honestly, okay, I'm, I'm for it. And the way they have set this thing up is fantastic. The tool set is excellent, absolutely excellent. And the thing I noticed about this is that they actually stamped USA, at least in the image, on the blade itself. Now that might not seem like a big deal. You're like, oh, well, all of them are made in the United States. Take a look at your Leatherman Surge, Wingman, uh, Wave, Rebar. Take a look at them really close. You'll, what you'll notice is there's something missing from this. Nowhere on this tool is made in the United States marked anywhere. Yeah, maybe you never noticed this. This is 100% assembled in the United States. Assembled in the United States but it does not actually meet the criteria of having 70% of its components coming from here. And that because, that's because the plier head and the bit drivers, and maybe even these little bolsters here, for instance, on the, on the surge, are not made here. And because of that, they are not able to put that USA mark on there. If you take a closer look at the free series tools, you will see USA printed right here. And uh, that was a big thing that they mentioned in their marketing for the free series tools. And if they were able to do it with this upcoming arc, that means that something has changed. Either the plier head or the bit drivers are now being made in the United States. That's the only way they could actually market USA Made. Because the problem with putting the bit holders in one of the current models is that would have pushed it over the edge, I'm guessing, is the reason why they didn't include it in the first place, if anyone was wondering. And uh, that was a big part of this, is having it USA made again, having it put that, uh, that stamp on there. And they, they were able to do that early on because there weren't specific stipulations on how, what percentage of the tool actually had to be USA made. And there was a lawsuit filed against Leatherman that made them have to take that USA mark off of it. And now that's why this was such a big a deal for it to come back on. Just a little bit of history lesson there. But that's gonna come at a pretty sizable price. Absolutely huge price, I think. Probably over $200. Now if it's either 200 or less, you better believe I'm gonna buy three of these things. Now that sounds crazy. If you're watching this and you're used to buying 30, $40 tools, this is probably not the market they were trying to go for. But the cheapest MagnaCut USA made folder that I can think of is around $135, which is the Hogue Deca. And uh, the prices for MagnaCut knives go well into the $700 range. That's not an exaggeration. So having this start off around $200 as a potential price is pretty reasonable. It comes with a bit kit, it comes with a sheath, and uh, the base price for the normal version of the free P4 is already $150. It's expensive, but this is a combination that will attract a group of buyers that don't normally get interested in multi-tools. So really, really awesome that they're able to maybe entice some people who wouldn't otherwise consider it. Good choice. And it also does something else. It kind of reestablishes Leatherman as being the top dog when it comes to multi-tools. And yes, uh, that comes at cost, but there's nothing Victorinox makes that's gonna come close, right? As far as materials are concerned. And uh, they definitely don't have the one-handed capability that this tool will have. Pretty impressive to say the least. So there'll be a lot more discussion about this tool in the near future. Um, I have a lot more to, that I've speculated about it. I think maybe they will keep this only sellable on Leatherman affiliated websites, you know, Leatherman Korea, Leatherman UK, and so on. That's my thought. I think they will. Uh, but uh, until we start seeing more information, such as the pricing, it's all speculation. But the fact that this is real means Leatherman is not going anywhere. Uh, I, I definitely foresee people being annoyed by this, but I also see it generating a lot of interest as well. And hopefully if this sells well, and I, my guess is that it will sell out in a very short period of time, at least for a brief period and before it comes back in stock, 
they will consider making a less premium version with maybe not a thumb stud and maybe like 428C. And I know everyone's sick of 428C, but it's fine for this particular purpose. And it would be nice to have a replacement for the free P4. This is a way better tool set. I love this tool set. So it would be nice to see that available as well. We'll see. And then at that point, you could potentially, potentially consider discontinuing the wave. I know that's a crazy idea, but right now you, that's a, that's a non-option with this tool in existence, potentially in a more reasonable comparative price, you could begin to make that transition. I'm curious to see what you guys think. If this was in 420, and let's say it was at 150, like the free P4, would you consider switching from the Wave to that one when your Wave finally kicks the bucket? Let me know down in the comments. Anyway, this is the state of the multiverse in January of 2023.